Boys and gents, this is your reaction. This is why was Churchill voted out of office after World War II? Short animated documentary by the channel History Matters. Churchill, who led Britain to victory over Germany in World War II, was quickly voted out of office after victory in Europe was declared and replaced by Clement Attell. But why was he removed? Okay. First of all, uh, obviously, I don't know much about Churchill, right? I don't think I ever watched any video involving Churchill in the, about Churchill. But uh, first of all, I know this, that in World War II, Churchill was kind of important, right? Because after the France's defeat, uh, the war was kind of at the doorstep of Britain, right? And at that time, he was, I guess, a key member with the decision on what to do, what not to do. Uh, he was one of the key members to bring USA into the table by, you know, explaining like how the war could also go over to USA and this and that. So he was a very key person in the World War II. So obviously, you know, he get praised for that. And obviously there are controversies too because uh, he was like, a, you know, I don't know, one of you, you he was more like your, you know, of, uh, some right-wing Republican type of mentality. He had some strong views on things, right? Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to say it here, but I'm pretty sure there are some multiple controversies like, oh, I can't believe this is happening, this and that, right? He has strong views about things. So he's hated by that. But I don't know why he would be voted out out of World War II. Because whenever there is war, that is the biggest driving factor there. If somebody brings you victory in a war, there's an automatic pass that they will get voted in every time. Like whatever terms that there are, two terms, three terms, whatever. So I don't know why after World War II he was immediately voted out. But yeah, I guess we'll see. I guess he did something that it didn't sit well with uh, British people or something but by the end of it. I don't know. Let's watch it. I like history matters. History matters explain things in short period of time. Three minutes, four minutes, usually three minutes around that. So yeah, let's do it. When you lead a country to victory in a major war and maintain great popularity throughout, it would seem unlikely that you'd immediately be Seriously? voted out of office. But this is what happened to Winston Churchill in the wake of World War II, who, despite being very popular, lost an election in 1945 just before Japan's surrender. Which raises the question, why? Why was Churchill kicked out of power just after winning the Second World War? Well, when Germany surrendered in 1945, the British government was governed by both the Conservative and Labour parties, which had formed a coalition after elections were suspended in 1940 for the duration of the war. This suspension was to last until the threat to the British mainland was gone, and when it was, the Labour Party withdrew from the coalition. Elections were scheduled for early July, and so both sides immediately started drawing up manifestos to put to the people. The Conservative plan was simple. Churchill. He was seen as the face of British victory over Germany, and the Conservative Party focused on his foreign policy credentials as being able to secure the empire and also give Britain an enhanced position within the new world that was emerging. Beyond this, Churchill's plans for Britain were a part of what were known as the Four-Year Plan. This was co-authored by both parties and it promised the creation of a national health service funded by a new national insurance tax, the expansion of agricultural production to reduce food imports, and the rebuilding of the country after all those bombs had been dropped on it. Whereas the Labour Party also promised the creation of a national health service, the rebuilding of the country, the expansion of educational opportunities, but importantly they also promised to massively reduce unemployment, which was especially important given how many soldiers were returning home. So why did Labour win when the policies were Oh my god, I, I also remember the, one of the controversies I think Churchill had was uh, to the people, right, uh, to, you know, uh, workforce who strikes, right, I'm pretty sure he made some strong remarks about them, the people who leaves their factories and go on a strike or something, so I guess this particular factor where other party says like we're gonna give full employment while people knowing Churchill's view on people who strike basically, right, uh, yeah, I guess uh, that could be one of the major factors there so similar. Well, whilst Churchill was very popular, he was seen as a great wartime leader and not a peacetime one. Throughout the coalition, the Labour Party hadn't been in charge of running the war but running Britain domestically, and the people had seen them as being quite good at it. They had also importantly joined the government in 1940 and so they weren't tarnished by the failure of appeasement like the Conservatives were. Also, broadly, the British people wanted radical change. You see, the war kind of sucked and so people wanted to build a much better system after its end. Many of them felt that Churchill and his colleagues wouldn't do that in the same way that Labour leader Clement Attlee would. Yeah, makes Churchill sense. also made the mistake of thinking that the British people hated all things socialist like they had done in the past since it was no longer associated primarily with revolution and killing monarchs. It was now seen as a vital part of Germany's defeat and people like Joseph Stalin maintained great popularity in the UK. 
And as such, when Churchill said that a Labour victory would lead to a new Gestapo in Britain, it hurt his electoral chances. And throughout the campaign, the Conservatives made no attempt to change course, despite polling 20 points behind the Labour Party for the entire thing. So why didn't they change? Well, it was simple. They didn't believe the polls. And when the election was over... <laughs> this reminds me, was that Bill Burr? I think it was Bill Burr. Like, if somebody comes to you in a street with a fucking, you know, letter and pen or whatever, like, what is your view about this party? You tell them to get the fuck out of here. Why would you answer that? So, all these polls, how accurate are there? And that is kind of true, right? In 2016 in the US, uh, Hillary and Trump, the polls were saying, like, Trump is going to lose, like, fuck, like, holy shit. Hillary is definitely going to win. Obviously, it was opposite of that. Since that, whenever polls come out, people are like, yeah, polls, who gives a shit? So, it kind of makes sense about this. And uh, yeah, British people's view that, okay, war is not a good thing. I mean, you know, London and Britain was bombed constantly like that. So obviously people will be like, holy shit, let's not even touch anything war now after this is over. I mean, it's World War II. After World War II finishes, everybody's like, oh, fuck, we are exhausted. No more war. And you know, Churchill was the center of that. So I think everybody had this mentality like Churchill could be pro-war because of what he did in World War II, right? Uh, it, it, it's like kind of like, you know, uh, appointing a military leader or something as a prime minister, even though he wasn't, it's something like that. So people like, okay, if, if you keep the, him in office, there's a chance that might be another war or something. He might lead us to war or whatever. Other party might find peaceful solutions. So it kind of makes sense. Like you were great for us. You won the war, but I guess war is over. Now you, it's time for you to retire. The conservative leaders were shocked to find out that not only had they lost, they'd suffered the greatest upset in their party's history. Damn. And thus, despite his immense popularity with the British people, Churchill was kicked out of office just after World War II. I hope you enjoyed Makes this sense. episode, and a special thanks to my patrons, James Bizonette, Kelly Moneymaker, Sky Chappelle, Corsha Wolf, Jerry Lamb. Yeah, it definitely makes sense now. I mean, if you've seen, I mean, it's, it's like one of those things, right? Like, if somebody uh, gets a movie role, right, and they become too famous, like... Holy shit, like uh, Harry Potter, right? Uh, Daniel basically is like, he's Harry Potter. And if you become too famous, now it's really hard for people to see you as anything else and their career just tank. It's something like that. Churchill is like, you know, the leader, like, you know, you won the war for Britain. Uh, but Nazis were at our doorsteps, literally, because they took over France, right? And we were about to get screwed. You, you are the one of the key member who won this victory. Oh, it's a big thing. But I guess we don't want more of that. It's time for you to retire. Because anything we can think of you is like war-related and we don't want that shit. Kind of makes sense. And obviously his views didn't help. But yeah. Why well, that was why was Churchill voted out of office after World War II? By the channel History Matters. If you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. Check out the reaction. There's a link in the season. I love history reactions, right? My channel, you know, it's like a, a jump around with history, video game, general topic, this and that. It's very chaotic. That's why sometimes the algorithm goes up, uh, people get recommended my video, then sometimes it drops because even the YouTube get confused. Are you making history videos, game videos, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't care. I like uh, all of the genres, so definitely comment down any history related, whether it's, you know, history like this, right? Or Roman history too, right? I'm, I'm going to resume doing uh, history of civilist videos too, <laughs> which I stopped for a long time, I don't know. But yeah, all right, I'll see you next time.